Captured a bit on the drive down, but felt like the excursions were the fun part. They were definitely the part that like switched up the most. I mean, the ship was always there for us whenever we needed it, but you know, it was nice to go outside, like around, for the peeps who could go outside and walk around. True that. That's true. It was very surprising to me, like the experience of of doing a cruise because I had just kind of expected that it was be on a boat and kind of not do anything. The excursions kind of turned it into a much more dynamic experience than I had expected it would be. Yeah, we had a good amount of time at each port, especially first the first port. We were there till 6 p.m. Yeah. Gave us a lot of time to, to do stuff. At the snorkeling location, we at the snorkeling location we had we were able to like swim with fishes in like a mini reef thing. It was really cool. Yeah, it was neat. I don't think I've ever swam that close to a fish before. Yeah, I mean, Especially yeah. considering I got bit by a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have not been that close. Yeah, it was just a minor skin irritation for like a day, but... Okay, well, that's All good. gone now. The Jeep ride was pretty fun too, once we got the car started. Once we got the... What the... It was pretty fun it was. just to drive around. It was a lot of fun, I thought. It's always one of my favorite things to get to do is like drive in other countries. I haven't done too much of it on these trips with you guys and I thought it was Ren, you're such a lucky driver. Both very fun and very terrifying because the vehicles were not like in fantastic condition. This is true. But that's just part of the experience man. True that exactly I don't know. Something about it all like gives me some comfort. Um, that everything's worn down and kind of worn in, lived in, ratty, broken, like it might look like it's all trashy, but I don't know, to me it just feels like it's well used. Yeah. I feel like after having driven the Jeep, like I would totally get, I've, I've wanted a Jeep forever. And the big thing that I took away from it, apart from everything else, is that it is so hard to see past the nose of that thing. <laughs> yeah, like, especially the way they had that seat. Like I couldn't get the back of it to come up. Yeah. I had to like sit all the way up to be able to see where the nose was. And the windshield is so small. Did we ever figure out how to adjust the side mirrors? No. <laughs> Just <'Cause> the one. <laughs> and you could I'm adjust. pretty sure the other one was like rusted on yeah. in its position. <laughs> yeah. Calcified, stuck. It really felt like, this is in Cozumel I think, and it really felt like Cozumel was like a m much larger Ila Mujeres. A little bit. Like from, from what we saw at least. Yeah. We didn't yeah. see any of the um, like actual city. Yeah. But the the natural part, the the coastline, looked very very similar. Remember that crocodile we saw? Yeah, it was a little bit scary. Yeah, like, I don't even think the tour guides were expecting that. No. A lot of them said it was plastic. What? Oh, really? But I don't believe him. I think he was just joking around with the people. Like that's he was plastic. saying, it's this plastic. Go ahead and try and touch it. <laughs> well, that's not something to joke about. <laughs> I think they said there are like 250 crocodiles in this protected swampland. And this was interior too, wasn't it? To the island? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like, is this was this the brackish? Brack, uh, I don't know what it's called. Water? It was interesting to see like that water versus the ocean water right next to each other with drone footage, usually not something you can see. Yeah. Because it's RL. so dark versus the so blue. Yeah. But they said that both were still salt water. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Which I thought was interesting. It's so flat through there, too. I, I really wonder, like, does it flood ever? Potentially. I mean, I mean, during, like, storms and hurricanes and stuff, I imagine it's not a great place to be. Like, mm -hmm. good old overlap or something? Yeah. Pretty close proximity, dude. Wouldn't doubt it. Seems Wa had some bouts with sickness on this trip. Yeah. yeah. Seems Josh was first, I was second. Got a little bit of hours left for Riles to catch some sicknesses, but... Please no. <laughs> Your boy had some really bad food poisoning for, what was it, nearly two days? <clears throat> yeah, the beginning of the trip, like the whole first day, you were pretty much out. And yeah. Dude, Rome got pretty sick too, a few days in. Are you referring to yourself in the third person now? Dude, true story. <laughs> what? I see Riley? Now. I got a little bit of a cough, but... Ain't the same level of sickness that you guys had. 
Riley, how was it going up the stairs of that lighthouse? Uh, it was fine going up. It was really right there. next to impossible coming down because once we got to the top, like people just kept coming up. Other tours kept showing up and they would just keep coming up and people would be like, no, you can't. Like, please stop. It was literally a ring of people crowded around the top of the lighthouse. It doesn't we sound had to very push safe. push our way back down. It was not. There were railings and stuff. There were railings, yeah, but it was like you couldn't stand there. You That's were all awful. squished together. And people, like, you couldn't tell people to stop coming up. Um, Yay. Going back to the boat, what? What did yeah. you guys think of the food? Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. What did you guys think of the food that we had once we were in Cozumel at that little restaurant by McDonald's? That was really good food. It, for some reason, the like, the the like very well done meat that goes in the tacos and other stuff in Mexico like really gets in my teeth, but mm. it tastes so good. I always like Mexican food, especially yeah, like, when it's in Mexico. Like I love Mexican food. Mexican food. This is Costa Maya now, and <coughs> this, I didn't expect that we'd show up at a, like a butterfly preserve. Yeah. But we did. I don't really <coughs> understand why they were doing the whole butterfly farm thing, other than maybe as a tourist attraction. Yeah. Because it seemed like they would grow the butter, like they would hatch them from eggs, and then grow them to live in that greenhouse, and then they would just stay in the greenhouse until they died. Yeah. Not that they're like releasing any, so. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it is just a purely tourist attraction. There was a... Uh, was it in Costa Maya that we did the tequila tour? Or was that in Cozumel? That was in Cozumel. Cozumel. That's when Yoa got sick. Dude, true story. After that. There were a couple factors with that one. <laughs> yeah. Multi-factor illness. Multi-factorial illness for Ma. Secondary too. Independent of Yoa, potentially. Hopefully. Entirely. <laughs> I think it was the shrimp for me, because you said you uh, were feeling I don't know, dude. I think it was the boudin for you. Yeah, I think oh, it was really? those intestines you were eating. Or... You ate, like, a lot of it. I it liked it, to me. but you probably I ate, like, one or two bites of it and felt kind of weird about it. Oh, okay. So that's why I stopped eating it, but yeah, we're having such a good time, like, loving it. I was yeah. like, hmm, maybe it's fine, maybe it's just mo. Yeah, I didn't notice anything at the time, and betting that that's what it was, though. I, I agree. Mentioned. I agree with Riley's assessment entirely. These Mayan ruins were so cool. Just rub it in, dude. Yeah, Ramiro didn't get to come see him because he wasn't feeling so hot. We joked about the Osmo having a climbing Mayan ruins mode. mode. No joke, dude. I swear I nearly fell off those steps like two or three times. We had a really good tour guide when we were there, too. Yeah. Juan Carlos. Like, Juan Carlos, super knowledgeable guy. He's really good. He must have been university educated. Yeah, uh, well, definitely. I asked him where he went to college and he started telling me, but then got interrupted by somebody asking him for directions on how to get down the stairs. <laughs> um, and he was like, just walk. Uh, he was a funny guy. He was. His family is Mayan, which I thought was interesting. He said he enjoyed, like when I asked him about um, why he thought of the all like the Maya rituals and the ruins being subject to so much tourist attention. He said he was really okay with it because it preserves his family's traditions and like keeps people interested in it. It's good for tourism. Like brings a ton of money into the space, probably. Yeah, sure. That's kind of neat that he could like tour us around his ancient cultures, heritage sites. He was really funny about the uh, about the theories of aliens coming and taking the Maya away too. Oh yeah. You, what, what did he say about that? I was uh, oh, he was he, he was really scornful of them because like there was the practice of, of deforming children's upper class children's heads <coughs> so it would look more like corn because corn was sacred to the Maya and so people like people thought that the Maya were aliens because of those skulls which, you know, they're not, so, whatever. That and, like, the Maya disappeared from this site in, like, the 13th century, and nobody knows why. And lots of people say it was aliens that just took them away. Like, eh, probably not. <laughs> he brought something up, and, and you were talking about this the other day, too, I think, uh, that, like, a series of droughts from, like, El Nino, like, 20, 30-year-long droughts, mm -hmm. kind of probably had something to do with it, and then... What Juan Carlos was saying too is that there, like, 
it a lot of these sites used to be uh, theocracies, religiously controlled. And then during these periods of drought, like the warrior castes came in along with the, when the culture of the Toltecs kind of started merging in with the Maya, the, the warrior castes gained greater prominence and that could have helped, you know, create difficulty for the, or the, the power structure as it exists. Two trees, one thing. This is like a neighborhood. Used to be, anyway. To be. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> this is a really pretty, really pretty neighborhood. It would have been right up on this Temple of Venus. So you can step outside on your front porch and watch human sacrifices. Yeah. Opposing warriors getting their jugular vein cut. I always think it's interesting that we focus on that because if there's any kind of sacrifice at all, there's probably a whole bunch more animal <clears throat> sacrifice going on than like human. True. Just because there's more of them, it takes true. less effort. And we never hear about the animal sacrifice and be fascinated to know more about that because it probably took place on a more daily basis. Probably because the human sacrifice is what's more appalling. It was, it was interesting too because uh, Juan Carlos was saying that they like give them some sort of drug. They gave them mm -hmm. some sort of drug so that they didn't have any idea what was going on really? when they were sacrificing them. Yeah. Which makes sense. I think like a lot of executions throughout history has been as much about putting on a spectacle for the people um, by like a show of force as it has been putting on a spectacle for people by showing it off as a religious experience. So if you can make like the condemned feel that they're doing something greater than themselves or that the execution is something they're honored to be part of, then that also like, increases its, its value in the eyes of the society. This was the first time I got to <laughs> fly the full two batteries on the drone that I have and this was at the end of the Costa Maya tour. They dropped us off at like a, a little beachfront thing with that big natural uh, sandbar. Yeah, bike water <laughs> sandbar. Thank you. And you can't really tell, but the wider sand on the on the uh, landward side is largely water. But that was so clear. It was a lot of fun being able to fly all that. Yeah, we got to meet up with Rumier here on this beach. Yeah, I was feeling a little better and kind of showed up with my buds. I was there a little early, earlier than them and kind of just looked around a little bit. And got a quick massage. And then Riley got a massage and me and uh, Josh spent some time with the drone. Showed me around a little bit on the DJI app and kind of let me see what was going on from his view. From called Page. And I called Page here this time too, since I had uh, phone coverage. That's been the funny thing about the cruises, like, normally it's, what's the Wi-Fi password is one of the first things that <laughs> we all ask, and on the boat, we haven't been worried too much about the internet, but then once we've been getting on land, for me anyway, I've also not been worrying too much about it, just because I've been a little bit out of the practice. Yeah, it's been really nice to just not be glued to a phone for the week. It's just been very relaxing. Not having to keep up with so much stuff, so much information. Yeah. But the the sun is so nice. Because it's like February right now. And it's been like 85 plus. Very warm. It's been so nice. Very sunny. But thankfully we didn't catch much rain on this trip either. No, we didn't. Except when we first came into NOLA when we were getting on the ship it was a little rainy. But oh, pretty true, quickly yeah. cleared up. Last time I went on a cruise with my dad, it was raining for like one and a half days at sea. Oh wow. Which was kind of a bummer, but yeah. thankfully we, uh, we avoided all that. Yeah, dude. Got outside. lots of sun time. Lots of sun time. Lots of golf time, shuffleboard time, basketball, basketball with some 13 year old boys. A lot Who of fun. Who schooled us? The shuffleboard was surprisingly difficult. And a lot of fun. Lots of fun. It's so hard to like finesse that thing. And then on the ship, it would rock and roll and. <laughs> like bowling? Yeah. Yeah, you guys well, like and bowling. I did bowling the other night, and that was. Next I mean, to impossible, but very fun. In the first place. 
I don't think either of us ever broke a hundred. No. We were uh, bowling next to a very loud and drunk group of like eight people. Who and two of seemed to be like Elvis impersonators. <laughs> Based on their mutton chops. They were having a good time, but...